Oh, I should have talked to uh, Ock and Ear when we were outside. Can I be perfectly honest? I really don't like the isometric viewpoint. The characters are very flat. And they don't look good in an isometric environment, if you ask me. Especially when said isometric environment has very limited lighting and shading. It doesn't look great. Where is my cup? Has anyone seen my cup? Yeah, cup. What? So this bunny is like looking for a cup or something. Well, I don't know about cup size, but those outside sure are big knockers. <laughs> Let me tell you all about those big knockers outside. I'm not letting that one go. Let's just go in and see what's what's up. What do you want? We seek Elara, matron of the orb. You have found her. Identify. I am she. My name is Rip. These are my companions. Ia, Lieutenant of the Forest King, and Sergeant Ak of the Boar Guard. We, we call him Dick. Orb of Storms. For what purpose? To return it here. How do I know you're not planning to keep it for yourself? Why would we come here asking you for it? <sighs> I have no personal interest in the orb. I have no personal interest in the orb. Then why do you search for the orb? I have been falsely accused of the theft, and my friend is being held hostage until the orb is returned. So that doesn't make sense as a premise, right? <sighs> the person accused of theft is tasked with the quest of recovering the stolen item? Yeah, I know, right? It seems to me they should have asked the, 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 the rat guy, the one who won the D&D chess game, again. <laughs> Why not wear the uniform of the elf guard? Anyone can wear a uniform. Bring me a token of authority from the king himself, and you shall have my cooperation in conducting your investigation. Oh, it's like we should have been given it from the get go. Now go. go. Wow. Go. Shoo shoo. Shoo. When you have the so this is the mysterious Alara. The only mystery about Helara is uh, those knockers, am I right? <laughs> What's really throwing me off about uh, the interaction between the characters and the isometric background is the fact that the characters are not producing shadows when they walk, and yet all the other props and things scattered across the map, they do have shadows. As such, the contrast is even more accentuated. And I realize, I know that programming in shadows to move with your sprites would be an endeavor, but I cannot help but notice how weird this is, that the trees have shadows, the benches have shadows, but the characters do not. Do I you do, feel I, my I, pain? Yeah, I do feel you on that one. Again, it's not a good look for the way these characters are drawn. When you look at early examples of isometric games, it's usually computer RPGs, such as Diablo or Fallout. Whereas the sprites, the characters are drawn in such a way that you're looking at them from up above. Perspective-wise, you're looking at these characters from the front and from the side, not from above. As such, when you place them on an isometric world, which is akin to looking at the world from a above position, they look weird. Yeah. They look like they don't belong in the space they occupy. I think this choice was misguided. Even if I can appreciate the intent of trying to craft a world that seemed larger, three-dimensional, an attempt was made. It's charming. Sexy foxy strut. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that strut. Let us take a small stroll to the forest. What do you mean at last? It's only been five minutes. 
trees, flowers, it's trees, just being dramatic. What more could anyone ask? Mud! Bors! The Bors love mud! I mean, Bors ate everything! <laughs> this is most foolish. We are the last people the Forest King wants to see. I suggest we continue our search. But we have to... Maybe it scares you. It's not that bad, no. is it? No, you see, boars hate being confronted with their own masculine insecurities. Uh -oh. <laughs> boars must be must be kept inside the closet at all times. <laughs> oh my! Hi, Forest King. Why do I feel like I am suddenly in a Shakespearean play? That's pretty much what all this gives me the vibes of. It's all like a play. Yes, it's like we are meeting Oberon, the king of the fairies, in a Midsummer's Night dream. Except 20% more of Fury. <laughs> yeah, she won't let us in unless you say so. She was very mean to me specifically. Requires a token of authority before she will grant us admittance. Isn't that what I said? No. It is exactly what I said! Stop stealing my spotlight, you mean elk! <laughs> and of all of us who feel this loss, it is she who feels it most deeply. Here, take this to her. This will convince her of your authority. Well, this was uh, surprisingly, shockingly straightforward. I know, right? Speak by you. Your quest will be an arduous one, and time is of the essence. What's this about a war with the boar? A boar war? The apple of discord from Greek mythology? Uh, let's go to the village. Your glasswares are pretty Everybody has such a puffed up chest situation. This is not an information booth. You are not going to purchase anything. What is that accent supposed to be? I have no idea. And is it meant to be an accent in quotation marks, or is the voice actor actually having an accent? I would not know. We're going to have to look up the cast for this game later on. Yeah. Can you stop getting in my face every time you say that? What are you looking at? I'm a boar. Well, he won't talk to us. This odd fellow may be our last chance. Last we do chance have money, to... don't we? I, I'm just basically just going to be using a guide to help me with some things because the way this game has been designed due to, let's say, lack of time sort of deal and budget reasons, there are some parts of the game that are a little annoying to traverse through because this game actually decides its wisdom to basically uh, chuck your way mazes at some point. Oh no, it, not mazes. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Oh no, multiple? Plural mazes? Yes, uh, there's a couple of mazes in the game. That's I will say this, I'm yeah. aware that this game has actual chunks of itself missing. Yeah. That ferret is a giant, apparently. Look at the perspective. I know, right? Jeez, look at him, he's like... That's it, a very big ferret. A big ferret looks more thicker. <laughs> That's a thick, chunky I ferret. Think we're going to get a straight answer from this fellow. I mean, this is an entire village of ferrets. It's I basically heaven on earth. You know, my brother actually had a pet ferret, right? Uh, back in the day. You can have pet ferrets legally in yeah. Britain? Yeah, we can have, you can have a pet ferret uh, legally. That's That sounds great. I, and at the same time, problematic. Yeah, you have to be very, uh... Particular? Uh, yeah, you have to be particular as well as careful with them, because ferrets can be very curious and adventurous sort that if you 
keep your eyes off them or not have the area that you're storing them in. So the worst flows of cats and dogs. He basically went up and down the street, the entire street, that some of the neighbors saw him. <laughs> I say, is that another grown possum, Harold? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's continue. Good day to you, sir. Anything I can get for you? No, just browsing, thanks. Browse away. I'll just stand here and stare at you until you buy something. <laughs> and you better buy something. I don't know if you know this, but I am big. <laughs> I could eat you. I could vor you and store you into my stomach. Spikes. <laughs> the most useful things I can think of. You have no imagination. That's very... So I am noticing a acute lack of personality from our protagonist. Yes, quite. Well. <laughs> Let me rephrase my question. Can we get plastered here? Try the pub. You can always get plastered there. I <laughs> knew you were going to make that joke. I knew it. Even before you said it, I knew you were going to make that stupid joke. I hope you didn't. I must be a fortune teller. Sure, I've got plaster. Got some great plaster. Fast drying, super hard. Best. You got plaster for brain. 15, well, convenient. That's very convenient. We happen to have that. Question. Yeah. What do we need the plaster for? I believe at some point we need the plaster for something specific. Pretty strong rope. Nice choice. That's cheaper than the other one. Cheaper than the other one? <laughs> Just an ordinary window. Nice choice! You get a nice view! <laughs> nice choice! That view is cheaper than the other one! Nice choice! This lamp is cheaper than the other lamp! <laughs> <laughs> Looks at his wife and he says, Nah, I'm not gonna say! <laughs> nice choice, but not a cheap one! Hey, hey, hey! Am I right, folks? Aha! Uh -huh. Women! Wives shopping? Haha, <laughs> is this mic on? <laughs> oh, oh my god. Buy the plaster and keep the bag it comes in. Keep the bag need the bar. Keep the bag, he says. Sure. Let's buy the plaster. We've decided to go ahead and purchase the bag of plaster. And you have the fifteen credits. Why so expensive? <laughs> Okay, we just need to get the plaster, so... Okay, let's just get it. We've got to give him the money. And he's got to have money. Because his wife is expensive, you see. <laughs> <laughs> and his wife turns out to be a man. <laughs> a boy wife. Ah, a boy wife. You are a man of taste. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know me. <laughs> because... You know, if there is one constant with furries, it is fanboys. <laughs> Speaking of which, look at our sexy fox man. <laughs> There's a lot of man cakes, honestly, in this in this game. Uh, I'll be <laughs> honest with you, Davar. These character designs are not doing anything for me. I do understand that they carry a whole lot of references. I can see some Richard Scarry influences in these designs, as well as classic illustrations, realistic illustrations of animal people from uh, books and the such like. Yeah. They don't look particularly appealing to me in this video game. The Forest King sends his respects and bids us give you this golden apple as a token of authority. You may search to your heart's content. I shall open the gates. Good fortune Whoa. be with you. What's with that acting? <laughs> I shall open the gates. I don't know you were about to open the floodgates, lady. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where the orb rested. 
Time to steal the pedestal. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a plot twist, wouldn't it? Like, time to steal the pedestal. That's what we were after all along, the pedestal. Nobody ever suspects the pedestal. They're all too busy focusing on the orb atop the pedestal. It is the perfect crime. The best crimes. What are we going to do with this useless pedestal? <laughs> Easy. We're just going to put some important looking items on it. What we're we looking for here exactly. I just don't like how cluttered this screen is. The way the trees are positioned, they just get in the way of you looking at the characters. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? A bag of fertilizer for the garden. Can I? No doubt. Take no it? doubt. Yes, maybe that's for the best, considering you probably know what it comes from. It's fertilizer. Yes. Everybody knows fertilizer is just another name for licorice. Om nom 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 nom! <laughs> <laughs> oh mm. god. Mmm, chocolate fondente. <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> If if I wasn't if I didn't have if I didn't have my hand on my mouse I would I would I would I would probably slap you right now. <laughs> I know I, 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 I know I'm gonna sound old fashioned saying this guys but uh, but what was wrong with you know side on views with you know single screens to just explore rather than this. Yes, it's a bit overwhelming. It makes the world seem larger, yes, but on the other hand, it makes exploration a bit more cumbersome, especially if you're looking for specific items needed to progress in the story. And already, these games are pretty hard when it comes to their puzzles, because of misguided notions of what constitutes a challenge in these particular kinds of games. I will once again reiterate that the post-apocalyptic anthropomorphic fiction, or PATH for short, yeah. has had many entries, and even without the post-apocalyptic premise to this, it still would be a pretty average, typical premise for a regular anthropomorphic fiction. Especially with all the casual animal racism in it. Found the bucket, it's hidden here. Yay! Oh. Behind this oh. tree. Oh no, that's not good, game. That's uh, no good. Sonic says it's no good. I would like to say that this bucket, because of its being grey, it kind of blends in with the fences, so... Again! This would be less of an issue if you had a side-scrolling area instead of an isometric one that fills the screen with cluttered props. This is not a good presentation for a point-and-click adventure game. Yeah. The trees! I'm going to take a chainsaw and cut down all the trees. <laughs> I'm going to travel to the Amazonian forest. Nice, clear water. Also, I don't really like how small this fountain is. The proportions are all over the place. Are the characters giant or are the trees small? Oh, let me look at this. I've never seen berries like this before. I wonder where they came from. I've never seen berries like this before. I'm going to take them, this completely random group of pixels. Oh, located I, I, into this I, I, one area I could have easily missed. Oh, can ear? Oh, you're in the way for a moment, so let's take a look at this footprint over here. Wait! What? Wait! Important clue! Do you recognize it, Ia? It doesn't look familiar, but tracking was never my strong point. Perhaps we can find someone who can identify those feet pics, though. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> so, what should we the do? bar? Yeah. You mean to tell me that this very, very, very important clue, yes. necessary to the investigation and the story progression, was situated 
in this completely random spot at the top of this large isometric map hidden away by a bunch of easy to miss pixels. Pretty much. <laughs> Let's just. <sighs> I don't miss these games, you know? <laughs> I actually don't! <laughs> Let's just pick up this figure. This plaster is heavy. So that's why we needed the plaster, I see. What, we're just gonna ask everyone in the kingdom, Hey, can we check your feet? <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Can you show feet? Uh, no particular reason. Mm, sure. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like it's like the Cinderella situation again. All of this Except time a lot more explicitly fetishistic. I mean, depending on how you see it, Cinderella is the Statue of Liberty for the foot fetish. <laughs> You're speechless, and that worries me. <laughs> I, I, I just don't, I just don't know what to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all the fetishes do come from somewhere, and it's usually fiction, because fiction is written by people who have their own kinks, and they <laughs> like to inject them into the stories they write. And it has been like that since the beginning of time. Even the cavemen were influencing their young. Yes. <laughs> The cavemen drew porn on their cave walls, but that's only for the adult section of the cave. <laughs> Walking into the enemy camp and risking capture ourselves is the last thing we need. But information is the first thing we need, and this may be our only way to obtain it. I still this might be the only way to obtain it. This is me, the main character, speaking. Hello? You are an honored Boar warrior, specially chosen for this mission by the captain of the Boar Guard. I should think you'd be expecting a hero's welcome. Bah, this assignment is not an honor. It is no. a punishment. <gasps> a punishment? A punishment? What was your offense? I was on guard duty. A great celebration was going on inside. And a fellow guard managed to slip me a tankard of ale. Then another, and another. The next Poor slob hail, you see. <laughs> the guard was throwing a bucket of water in my face. Oh no! And fell asleep on guard duty? Well, it's not like anybody died. Since then, whenever a disagreeable task comes along, it's given to me. I am the sad boar. Restores your honor. So we are a bunch of losers, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> the fox loses a game of chess. <laughs> He's a loser. Go save the world. The boar, the boar gets drunk while on guard duty. Go save the world as punishment. What about you, elk? What did you do? I kill a man. Why? <laughs> and then I try to eat them. Because I reject my herbivorosity. Like anyone I know? There's a lot to unpack there, Elk. Yes, uh, a bunch of stuff. Also, I just realized this castle. I just realized. I just realized that this uh, these people have other animal skulls just casually <laughs> displayed on spikes. Yeah. In this in this supposed children's game. Yeah. Also. Also, it's only a model. <laughs> the castle. Oh yes! Buy the original Inherit the Earth Boar Castle set! Totally not a castle Grayskull ripoff. Also, also, hope you like this music, Mad Hog. <laughs> Excuse me, we have come to see... Well, well, what have we here? If it isn't a fox and an elk, an elk. So, were you able to find your way back by yourself, or did you get lost again? <laughs> Shut up! It was only five times. <laughs> Let's trick him. Oh, please, Sergeant Ock, have mercy on me. Please don't make me. 
me go in front of the boar king. Uh, I'm, I'm not into this at all. What are you talking about? That's totally not my king. You are so strong, you are so strong and I'm so weak. As much as okay. I fear you, I fear the king even more. Riff. Riff, now is not the time for our king play, okay? <laughs> Maybe some other time? We've been walking many days to get here and are fatigued beyond words. We cannot keep up with you. Acting. <laughs> it's just as good as the regular acting. No time for rest. You, Fox, get to the throne. Yes, master. The king will enjoy Yes, daddy. I mean <laughs> Yes, yes, daddy. I mean master. I mean Open the gate. Sugar daddy, master. <laughs> Oh, okay, so we we don't have a companion again. Oh, wait, is this some. Oh, no! Is this some. Oh, no! Let me oh, see. no! Let me, let me take a look, see? No. Okay. Follow the path to the throne room. Okay, so it's not a maze. Thank God. This looks warringly like a labyrinth. Oh my gosh, this looks exactly like a labyrinth! Why? Why did they build this into this <laughs> castle? Why did they program this into this game? What is the point of traversing all that? Ah, Reef of the Fox Tribe. Care to join me into this erotic mud bath? I have come to ask your indulgence. I said I like to be addressed face to face. So we have to come into the mud. That's what I said. <laughs> That's what I said. But your I thought I was being clear. Address me here in the mud. Then Fox, come sit on my lap. <laughs> enjoy my musk. Guess. You will enjoy my aroma. Well, let's go your into Majesty, the mud. I am deeply Look at the faces this. making. Well, I don't know about this. I believe <laughs> Reen, come join me in the erotic mud bath with the king. We're having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're being so mean. You're so lucky. I'm into this. <laughs> Humiliation play is one of my many kinks. But I will return to claim both my friend and my honor. And also second round into the mud buff. Oh, uh, I am. I am. Where, where did I come from? I'm lost. Oh gosh. Oh, I'm so lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, what have you learned? Yeah, mud. How revolting! I mean, I'm totally into that. My fur. So I'm also into that. What's this? What is it? Huh? It appears to be a ring with the crest of a wolf's head. Are about. you serious? It. it was stuck on my toe when I came out of the mud. Oh, I see. So I wasn't the first one to have an erotic mud buff with his majesty. Oh, no. <laughs> Clearly he was plotting something with someone before we came here. And apparently it was a wolf. Of course it's a wolf. Why would it be it's a wolf? It's always, always a wolf. Even in beyond the edge of Alsgard, it was all the wolf's fault. Ah, yes, it was always the wolves. Always the wolves. Anyway, right, okay.